Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Monet here and today I am answering a quick question or I wanted to answer this question or address it. I have recently got a question about this and I thought it would just be a good thing to share with those of you who are married and may be experiencing this. And the question was, do I have to uphold my vows if my spouse isn't? As a Christian, we all know the vows that are for rich or for poor, better or worse, in sickness and in health. We promise to, you know, cherish this person and to honor this person. And these are the things that we say when we get married. But what happens when our spouse isn't doing these things? What happens when our spouse may be being unfaithful or maybe they aren't um, loving us anymore? Maybe they are just kind of abandoned in the marriage. What happens when they aren't being the spouse or they aren't doing their part, their vows, what they said they would do? Do we have to uphold our own end? So it's important to know that, yes, you are still required to hold up your vows and I know that's a lot easier said than done especially when you feel like the other half of you maybe your husband maybe your wife is not upholding their vows it's not doing what they said they were doing or they're doing their own thing while you feel like you put in effort you feel like you may be putting in your time and energies and investing and trying to better the marriage and they aren't concerned about doing the same thing they're they aren't um, upholding their vows you still have to uphold your vows. the reason being is because this is a promise that you made and also it's good to know that the vows are as much a promise to God as they were to your spouse your vows were not only to your spouse you guys are vowing to um, keep these rules for each other the vow was a covenant that you made with your spouse and a covenant that you made to God so not only would you disregarding your vows be breaking the covenant with your spouse, you disregarding your vows is breaking a covenant and a promise that you made to God. When you stand before a minister and when we vow or do these things or say these things before a minister who blesses the marriage or blesses the union in the name of God, or we say these things in the name of God, we stand before someone who's blessing it and we stand before um, each other and we stand before God on our wedding day and these are the promises that we keep. These are the promises that we are making and the covenant that we are making. And even if your spouse is not upholding their vows, it will be a broken promise to your spouse and to God. And that's so important to know. It's also important to know that you will have to answer for you, okay? Even if your spouse is, maybe they're being unfaithful. Maybe they aren't treating you like you would like to be treated. They're not loving you like you feel you should be loved, supporting you like you feel you should be supported. Maybe circumstances have it where they haven't been as adamant on improving the marriage as you are you still will have to answer to God no matter what they're doing at the end of the day when we all stand before God he will ask us what we did with our time he will ask us about what we did our sins he will ask us about our shortcomings he will ask everything about you regarding you what you did he will not ask well I know they did this to you so you know, did, did that make you do? He won't ask about what other people did to make you retaliate or make you act. He will ask you about the decisions you made, the choices you made, the actions you took, no matter what anybody else did at the end of the day. The decision is yours. The choice is yours. Reacting out of spite reacting out of trying to get them back or reacting out of I just don't care they're doing their own thing so I'm gonna do my own thing not only will you have to answer to God but it can lead you down a path of sin yourself and when two people are going in separate direction it creates more division it creates more um, room it creates more foothold for the enemy to have in your marriage it gives them a foothold to come in and run rapid because nobody's upholding vows nobody's valuing the marriage there's no respect there's no honor there's no commitment there's no covenant because now two people have gone their separate way am i saying that you have to stay in a marriage where there is abuse abandonment or adultery absolutely not the bible tells us that we have every right to leave but what I am saying is when you feel like your spouse is breaking their vows, when you feel like they aren't where they should be, where you feel like that, hey, you promised me this and I feel like you're falling short. You're you're short, you're coming short on this 
um, whatever you see, the promises that you made, my advice to you is to continue to keep your vows. You don't let whatever your spouse or any person is doing intrude on not only the covenant and promises you made to them, but to God. Marriage is supposed to be, we're supposed to model how Christ is. Christ loves us irregardless. Christ forgives us. He, he loved us so much he gave his life. It's supposed to be about sacrificing, our, dying to our flesh, dying to ourselves when we want to do what we want to do. It's about serving one another. Laying down our own wants, our needs, and desires and serving our spouse. And if both people are doing that, killing their own flesh, dying to their own flesh and serving one another, then it creates an environment for growth. It creates an environment for love to flourish. It creates an environment that's just so fruitful to having a good marriage. So I encourage you to continue to stay in prayer for your spouse. If you need therapy, go ahead and get therapy. Continue to intercede for your spouse, cover your marriage, and you continue to do the good work that you know you should do. Continuing to plant seeds to water your marriage because every marriage has a good season. Every marriage has a bad season. A season where one spouse may feel like they're putting in more work. One spouse may feel like um, they, you know, their partner is falling off somewhere or their marriage is suffering. There, there are different seasons in marriage and so I encourage you to hold on to continue to intercede continue to uphold your vows to not only your spouse but to God to get therapy maybe try couples therapy if it's something that's unchanging and you feel like you guys need to be under a minister to get godly counsel or wise advice do that but continue to hold strong you continue to uphold your vows and I encourage you it will get better I've seen <laughs> I've seen the best of marriage and I have seen low points in marriage and I can definitely tell you that God can bless your spouse God can change your spouse God can touch their heart and talk to them he can correct and convict them way better than you can okay <laughs> so I just want to encourage you and I hope this helped if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe if you have not subscribed already and you want to see more content like this marriage love advice relationship and topics and videos also faith-based content, motherhood and parenting content, all that good stuff. If you like it, subscribe and hit your bell notification. That way you won't miss out on anything that I upload. And I will see you on the next video. I love y'all so much. Bye.